WWE has decided against bringing back CM Punk. CM Punk's intention to return to the company was reported in the latest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, with sources from his camp stating that the two sides were in talks. Dave Meltzer provided an update on the situation during a special Tuesday night edition of the Wrestling Observer Radio. Dave Meltzer said, quote, they turned him down. The decision was a no. He wanted to go there and the decision was a no. I mean, it can always change and it was brought up to me that there is no such thing as no forever when it comes to WWE, but it's no for now. It's Vince's decision. Vince, Nick Khan, Paul Levesque, and obviously, they decided that the negatives outweighed the positives. Dave Meltzer also noted that WWE also decided against bringing CM Punk back when Fox wanted them to in 2019. Punk and WWE were also said to have spoken with each other while Punk was out injured following All Out 2022. Meltzer said, about 10 months ago, they were talking again at that point, but he was still under contract to AEW. And I was told that that would be a no, but it's easy to say it's a no because there's no chance they could get him because of the contract. But this time they could, and they decided to pass. CM Punk was backstage at a WWE Raw event from Chicago on April 24th. He is said to have visited with Triple H and The Miz before being asked to leave. Meltzer continued to say, It could always change and it was made very clear to me that if WWE's business went down, they know it's a card that they could play, but is it worth it? Nick Khan was asked about WWE's potential interest in Punk last month. Nick Khan noted that they only have respect for Phil and wish him nothing but the best. Alright, let's get into some NXT highlights. The Undertaker made his presence felt at the end of Tuesday's NXT. Braun Breaker in the ring laid out Carmelo Hayes after their match on Tuesday and said he was the only badass in the WWE. The Undertaker's gong then sounded. Undertaker came out to his American badass persona and told Breaker that someday he was going to be a special talent. However, that day wasn't today. He then laid out Breaker hitting him with a choke slam. He then told Breaker he was going to give him some advice. There is always bigger, badder, badass around the corner, and he just met the baddest of them all. The show ended with Undertaker helping Hayes to his feet, both posing in the ring to end the show. The Undertaker has only made sporadic appearances since being inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2020, having his final match with AJ Styles that same year. His last appearance in WWE was back in January, appearing on Raw is 30 in a segment with Bray Wyatt. Two WWE NXT tournaments are set to make their return. Going into NXT, WWE hyped that Cody Rhodes would be making a major announcement. Cody kicked off the show and revealed that the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic will both be returning. Cody said the men's breakout tournament will begin following the conclusion of the ongoing women's breakout tournament. A timeline for when the Dusty Classic will start wasn't revealed. Also on NXT, Brian Pillman Jr. will have a new name when he makes his NXT debut. During the show, a video aired where Brian Pillman Jr. spoke about his upcoming arrival. Pillman revealed that he won't be using his father's last name in NXT. He'll instead be going by the last name King. Pillman said it seems like everyone has fond memories of his father, but that he doesn't. He was only four years old when his father died. He then said he tried other careers besides wrestling, but he's never been able to escape the industry. He said he wants to inflict pain on the business that has brought him so much grief. He then said that the real father figure in his life, the man who raised him, had the last name King. Now Pillman is going to use that last name too. WWE filed a trademark for the name Lexus King earlier this month. Pillman's vignettes have been airing on NXT for the past two weeks, but this is his first time speaking in them. Pillman joined the WWE Performance Center this August. He departed AEW in July when his contract with the promotion was not renewed. And going on to some AEW news, Hikaru Shida is the new AEW Women's World Champion. Shida defeated Soraya at Dynamite Title Tuesday to become the first three-time AEW Women's World Champion, securing the victory after Ruby Soho's interview interference attempt was thwarted by timeless Tony Storm. Soho attempted to spray paint in Sheeta's face early in the contest, but Sheeta reversed the attack. 
Storm then ran in and attacked Soho with shoes, and the two fought off. With the interference negated, Sheeta kicked out of the two night caps from Soraya, then avoided a third and cradled her to capture the Women's World Championship. Soraya's first reign with the AEW Women's World title ends at 45 days. She pinned Storm in a four way match, also involving Sheeta and Britt Baker at All In on August 27th to win the title. With the victory, Sheeta establishes the record for most women's world title wins in company history and will build on her record of 397 total days holding the belt. Sheeta's victory marked the second championship change at Title Tuesday. The first was... Orange Cassidy is now once again the AEW International Champion. Serving as a last-minute substitute after John Moxley was not medically cleared to compete for the International Championship, Cassidy defeated Ray Phoenix to win the title at Dynamite Title Tuesday. Cassidy used an orange punch and his mousetrap pinning combination to defeat Phoenix and claim the International title for a second time, ending Ray Phoenix's unplanned title reign. Phoenix won the title from Moxley at Dynamite Grand Grand Slam on September 20th in a bout where Moxley was scheduled to win, but suffered a concussion and changed the match finish in the ring. Moxley has still not been medically cleared to compete after his injury. Phoenix defended the title on each Dynamite episode since Grand Slam, securing wins over Jeff Jarrett and Nick Jackson in successful title defenses before dropping the bout to Cassidy. Orange Cassidy's initial international title reign stretched for 326 days and 31 defenses after defeating Pac for the bell on Dynamite in October 2022. His first reign came to an end at All Out on September 3rd of this year, where he lost to Moxley in a pay-per-view main event. NXT won the latest installment of the Tuesday Night War. WWE NXT averaged 921,000 viewers on the USA Network, up 7.5% from the previous week. It's the largest audience for the show since their second week airing on that network. On September 25th, 2019, Dynamite airing head-to-head -head for the first time since October 18th of last year, averaged 609,000 viewers on TBS. That's down 23.9% from last week and is the lowest audience the show has done done since June 18, 2021. That show was moved to Saturday due to the NBA playoff coverage at the time. It's the lowest viewership the show has ever done when airing head-to-head -head with NXT. NXT finished second on the cable sports charts with a 0.30 rating in the 18-49 demo, up 36.4% from last week. It's the fourth highest rating in the history of the show, trailing only the first three weeks that the show aired on USA in 2019. Dynamite was fourth on the cable sports charts with a 0.26 rating in the 18 of 49. That's down 7.1% from last week and is the lowest rating the show has done since June 28th. That's a wrap for this episode of The Latest. As always, thank you guys so much for checking it out. Please do not forget to subscribe to F4W online for more videos just like this one and lots more.